This is Carl James Edford, my video log looking at the archaeology of archaeology. This is part two, um, and today we're looking at Craswell Crags. As you can see by this quick description, it's on the Nottingham Derbyshire uh, border in northeast England. It's a fascinating site that um, looks at the very best of British archaeology where the caves were found and discovered and known about for some time but then suddenly over the past few decades the the enlightened use of the cave as areas where cave paintings have been found um, is really the focus today we, we've um, got lots of caves um, in Britain but up until very recent years we didn't know of any cave art we knew of occupation in a lot of them um, whatever theories you have about caves and whatever you've heard um, seemingly caves are the domain of our prehistoric ancestors even though in some parts of the world caves are still occupied by people and even today caves are still occupied by people but caves really come into their own in this wonderful paleolithic period a short um, video really there's the location Craswell Crags now the first discovery of any of these beasts um, is initially seen with etchings, incised marks on one of the cave panels. Um, and now we've got um, over a hundred various pieces of cave art. This has been described as a stag, this has been described as maybe a horse, um, but what you can see is the first instrument of trying to understand what we've actually got in this cave from this illustration. This is believed to be the neck and the beak of an ibis bird, um, very much seen in Egypt, but maybe in the prehistoric period, um, 12,000 years ago, as the last of the ice started to retreat from Britain, because that was the end of the ice age in Britain, um, these birds may have flocked north um, in the warm thermals, eating the rich plethora of flora and fauna which was to be found in the melted ice waters of northern England. As we start to understand the cave art at Craswell Crags, we start to think that maybe it's um, a stag. You can clearly see a stag marked in red here. From the earliest illustration, people have sort of put the lines together. But with much cave art, what you see is um, a, a juxtaposed arrangement of a number of pieces of cave art that have been marked in there. Many um, cave artists. There's in the one in blue there is a type of European horse, which would have spread like the deer, um, the auroch, the mammoths at this time, spreading from Europe. Um, because there was no um, water between Europe and Britain. It was that land bridge otherwise known later on as Doggerland. Creswell Crags, um, this illustration may be not completely accurate in the genre, um, but showing mammoths heading down this very fertile gorge, left with the fertile of the melting ice waters of the last glacial um, exposure in Britain. One thing I'll say as well, the reason why I sort of object with this illustration is because maybe the gorge would have been a bit more narrower because erosion has taken its toll over 12,000 years. So one of the mouths to one of a number of caves at Craswell Crags. And this next illustration here, you'll actually see that um, we've got a number of caves on display at Craswell Crags, which again shows you of the great array of archaeology there and maybe there's much more still to be discovered. Not only human occupation, bones of animals, flora and fauna, and more of this cave art. Bit of a bleak look. It's a bit of a bleak look today actually rather than in the past. Visitors at Craswell Crags, because it is open for um, as a visitor attraction, people looking up, trying to see some more of this cave art. Helmets armed. And as we look from above today, that's what Creswell Crags looks like today. 
back in the day, 12,000 years ago, it was a very, very fertile gorge in the sense there wouldn't have been any trees 12,000 years ago. And then about 1,000 years later, it would have been exploded with trees, um, nourished by all the droppings of those mammoths and elk and deer and so on and so on. One of the mouths to the caves. There you go. More of the etchings. Um, what's what's the neck of this beast? My my students asked. Um, what 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 are we actually seeing with the with the with the neck of this beast? As you can actually see it pointing up into the sky. Obviously, varying beasts illustrated at Craswell Crags. Hyena spotted hyena. Now this spotted hyena. Would it have been a white looking hyena? This is sort of more of a spotted hyena from Africa with the little polka dots all over it. There were hyenas in this, at this part of the north, amazing enough, even though they're warm animal. They were hunted around in the summer domains, even when temperature was off. Um, our modern day temperatures of minus 20 degrees C. So modern summer time temperatures today are about um, plus 30 degrees C. Back then you take 20 off, so summer temperatures about 10 degrees C. Um, but warm enough for these hyenas. People wishing to see a reconstruction of those little mammoth horns there. People may have lived. They wouldn't have lived in caves all the time, you see, because caves would have been full of those dangers. Into this cave ye goes. Back to these caves full of um, wolves, um, full of varying beasts. And um, these caves themselves are to be seen not only in, in Craswell Crags, as I said, in other parts of the country. Again, moving on, there's Craswell Crags. Looking down at the floor, the floor furniture there, well, this is what archaeologists usually see when they go into caves to excavate them. Bits of rubble, bits of dust, sand, uh, mud. But then underneath these layers full of archaeology, in some of them in France, the fossilised remains of human footprints, places like um, Lascaux um, and Altamira where you get footprints of our human ancestors. Another illustration, those beasts wandering down the gorge, meeting up with our human ancestors. A fertile landscape without trees yet, so this is illustrated about 12,000 years ago, maybe a bit more of a narrower gorge, but I like this one. Varian bones. And what, what have we got here? We've got hyena, we've got uh, mammoth, we've got um, woolly rhinoceros, we've got elk, auroch, we've even got the likes of the hyena bones and the teeth. We've also got the teeth of the wolf illustrated in the archaeological excavations of these caves, including human teeth as well. There you go, a swampy like landscape. Now, this is a bit later on, maybe about 11,000 years ago. Varying birds, varying up, like, upward boot beasts illustrated in these caves. Hyena skull, size of the hyena skull compared to a child. Again, there you go. Um, I can never work out the pronunciation of this horse illustrated here. I think it's Proselsky horse, um, which would have been roaming across Europe. I can be collect corrected on this one, folks. Um, the illustration of all the caves showing the different types of rocks uh, at our site at Creswell Crags. Again, lots of these caves are fenced off to protect the caves. Back in about 2012, when I reported um, uh, in, in my own Gower um, goat hole cave that um, it, you know the cave out was being vandalised, they then Cadu ended up putting a gate on it to stop people vandalising it, but it was too late. I think the Stone Age chart speaks for itself. If you can look at this for a few moments, seeing the development of our um, Stone Age, um, in other words, our Paleolithic through to our uh, Mesolithic period. And again, a piece of bone, the decipherment of the Craswell Crags ochre horse rib bone. Um, well, Maybe in those little lacerations on the bone, uh, you can see the ochre may have ended up in those lacerations, giving it some colour. But um, a rib bone, um, probably from a deer, and this actually people portable art about roughly between about 12,000 years ago. Anyway, this is my video log over for today. Thanks for uh, watching and more video logs on the way. This is Carl James Manford on Channel 01. 
to 1975. Thank you.